Let's talk about Google Summer of Code. If you are someone who's planning to participate in GSOC 2024, then keep on watching. I participated in Google Summer of Code back in 2019. So it's been four years now, but I believe that the program has not changed too much in these past four years. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what Google Summer of Code is, how to go about applying for GSOC, and lastly, how my experience was like. So let's begin. Google Summer of Code or GSOC is an online open source program organized by Google every year to bring in new contributors to open source. The program is usually three months long and during these three months, the accepted contributors are supposed to contribute to open source in their respective projects under the guidance of mentors. Selected participants are also paid a certain stipend based on their locations. So to be eligible, you must be 18 years or older. You must be eligible to work in the country that you will be residing in during the program. You must be an open source beginner or a student. You can actually participate in GSOC twice. So when does this program actually happen? So the program actually occurs during the months of June, July and August. But the application begins in March. And even though the application begins in March, most of the people start preparing for the program much before March. March, starting January, February, or sometimes I've seen people start preparing for it even a year back. So the official announcement for the 2024 program has not been done yet, but you can check out the previous year's website to get an idea of the timeline of the program. So the stipend ranges from $1,500 to $6,600. It can vary depending on your project size as well as location. You can check out the exact amounts depending on your location and the project size using the link I have added in the description box below. The stipend is actually paid in two parts after the mid-evaluation and the final evaluation. Note that Google Summer of Code cannot be considered as a form of employment by Google itself. So Google Summer of Code is not a job or an internship provided by Google. So now let's talk about the application process. So different open source organizations apply to become a part of Google Summer of Code. So once these organizations are accepted, they announce a list of the projects that they want contributors to be working on. So right now the organizations for 2024 have not been announced yet. What you can again do is refer to the previous year's organizations and have a look at the projects that were listed as part of the 2023 program. So you can filter the projects according to these categories listed over here so artificial intelligence data security social and communication etc you can also search for a particular technology so let's say i want to contribute to javascript projects so i can type in javascript and a list of relevant organizations will show up then you can click on any organization to see a list of their projects and view the project details to get an idea on an organization's page you will be able to see some important links over there so a link to their official github organization organization page, links to their official communication, chat or social media channels and sometimes a link to their contributors guidelines as well. So how to look for a project right now? So what you can do is go to the archive and spot a few organizations that participate repeatedly every year. So if an organization has been participating for a few years in the past, then they have a higher chance of again participating in 2024. But still there is no guarantee if they will participate or not. So make sure to shortlist like one, two, and at max three organizations. You don't want to shortlist more than three organizations because you won't be able to produce quality contributions in like more than three projects. One of the questions that I frequently get is can a beginner in coding participate in Google Summer of Code? If you don't know coding then obviously you may not be able to participate effectively in it because to be able to contribute to a code base you need to know at least some level of coding. So if you want to contribute to a React project you need to know react already you don't need to be an expert in react but you should have at least some personal projects with react you'll definitely see a lot more technologies being used in a particular project that you may not even have heard of before if you know the main technology that the project is centered around you can learn those new things 
along the way while contributing to the project itself. Now looking for a project and uh, an organization may take a lot of time and a lot of research but once you have found the perfect project for yourself the next step for you is to be able to set up and install the project locally for development. I think most of the projects that are part of GSOG have well-written documentation for newcomers, for contributors and for development. So you can go and look for the documentation in the GitHub repository. Look for instructions on how you can set this project locally and then try to do that yourself. Now one thing to note here is that it's possible that you're stuck by installing the project itself. Try to solve the issue yourself and only after doing your due diligence you should bring the maintainers from the project for help. So let's say you have a problem and you have tried to solve it yourself but you cannot figure out the issue. Then how do you ask someone for help? Somewhere in the GitHub repository or in the GSOC website itself, you'll be able to find a common communication channel. So sometimes the organizations may use apps like Slack or Gitter or, or some other communication platform. So you should join that, introduce yourself and, and then look in and around the chat if somebody else has already asked that question. If not, then you can go ahead and ask for help. Don't DM the maintainers directly. Ask for help in the public channels only. Let's say now you have the project set up. Now the next thing to do is to go and read the contributors guidelines. So the contributors guidelines is a document detailing the steps or rules you need to follow to be able to submit a pull request to that particular project. So since a lot of people come and go and contribute to these projects, there's a need to establish some rules to manage the chaos. So sometimes there may be rules for how to name your branches or, or how to title your pull request or how to go about testing, what kind of issues you can pick and how communication works in that particular project. So make sure you've read all of those guidelines before you actually start contributing. Now to contribute, you need to go and look for the issue tracker. If it's a GitHub repository, most probably the issues will be listed under the issues tab. Look for issues with the label newcomer friendly or Google Summer of Code or first bug or something related to that. So once you have shortlisted an issue that you feel confident in solving, you leave a comment there if you can assign it to yourself. It's possible that in the contributor's guideline, they would have mentioned how to assign an issue to you. One more thing, if you see a pull request already submit for an issue, obviously don't assign yourself. If you see someone else is already working on the issue, don't assign yourself or don't just directly submit a pull request because that is considered rude because somebody else has already spent time and effort on solving that issue and they're essentially trying to disrespect the work that they have already done so to avoid that from being happening make sure nobody else is working on that issue already and you are using the proper methods for assigning that issue to yourself now to solve an issue obviously here is where your skills come into place hopefully in the issue description itself you will be given like enough information to go on and solve that issue. Navigating code bases can be a difficult task. So I would advise you to go and look for simpler issues. So if you're starting right now, you have enough time, go and look for very simple issues. Get comfortable with the flow, get comfortable with the culture uh, in that particular repository. And, uh, and after you've gotten comfortable, after you've merged your pull request, no matter however simple that is, slowly build up the complexity of the contributions that you're making. One more thing to look out for while submitting a contribution is that most of these projects will obviously have some sort of testing. Make sure that the code that you're submitting passes all the quality checks, the automated tests and other guidelines if any. So I've spent most of this video talking about contributions and why contributions because they are the most important thing in your application. So your contributions before the application period begins are a good reflector of whether you are a good candidate for this particular project or not. do a lot of contributions but also do a lot of quality contributions to be higher chances of being accepted there are some tips on how you can improve your chances of being accepted so first of all obviously look for a project that is not too hard for you 
but you still get to learn new things number 2 is don't go into a project where there are already a lot of other people who are trying to contribute with gsoc in mind so in that case what would happen is most of the good issues will already be assigned to other people and you won't really get a chance to even be able to contribute to it so if you have not contributed to the project it doesn't make sense for you to even submit a proposal for that project i will talk about proposals a little bit later on in order to increase your chances obviously submit more pull requests than the other people in the project submit better pull requests than the other candidates and most importantly be in contact with the mentor so introduce yourself in the channel before you start contributing obviously and regularly be active there and maybe help other people solve their issues in the communication channels or and when the uh, official application starts make sure to communicate to the maintainer or the mentor that you are interested in participating under the program as part of the application you are supposed to submit a proposal so a proposal is just a document that outlines things like the project you want to apply to the project description how you are planning to work on this project in the upcoming 3 months you should give a description of what you are going to do in month 1 month 2 month 3 etc i've added a link to my proposal in the description box below if you want to check it out and most importantly you should mention all of the contributions you have made prior to the application period itself and even during the application period keep contributing to the project now again contribute to two and at max three different projects no more than that i don't even think you can submit uh, proposals more than two to three proposals and before you actually submit the proposal what i did was i asked my mentor to give me feedback on the proposal itself and and after getting that feedback i improved my proposal and then officially submitted it to the gsoc website this entire process of contributing to open source has been one of the most valuable experiences in my university days so i would highly recommend all of you to give it a try to contribute to open source irrespective of the program itself because it's going to teach you a lot of things about code quality communicating with people from around the world testing and so much more i think i've covered almost everything but if you have any questions you can let me know in the comment section below and the official website for google summer of code also has a lot of guidelines and a lot of tips and suggestions for contributors or people who want to apply to the program so you can check that out i'll also leave a link to that in the description box below